were talking earlier about leverage and and how it's sort of uh, Eric, I'd, I'd love if you could elaborate as uh, like remind us how you how you talked about it. But it's sort of like people have to give it to you, like it's sort of centralized. You know, it's not freedom. It's kind of the opposite of freedom. And I'm curious, like Naval, how do you think about like how do you get leverage, but also in sort of a decentralized way? You know, it might mean you're pseudonymous. No one knows you are. Can you like? What does that future look like where you have? Yeah, no, we're, 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 we live yeah. in the age of incredible, infinite permissionless leverage. Clubhouse is permissionless leverage. Anyone can jump on here and start talking. And if you're saying something interesting, you will build a following really, really quickly. Look, I jump on Clubhouse all the time. And what I do is I go through all the rooms. I listen for 10 seconds into each room. And I'm like, is this person saying something really smart that I am teaching me something? And if they are, great, I'll stick around. And if they're doing a really good job, I'll follow them. As you said, it's an unfakeable signal. So this is a prime example of how if you are an incredible thinker or speaker or you have some great insight, you will build up a following more quickly and more efficiently on Clubhouse than in almost any other medium that came before. If you're a great musical performer, perhaps you have a chance with TikTok. Or if you're a really funny comedian type, maybe you're good on YouTube. You know, whatever it is. But this is the era of permissionless leverage. Now, if you want to crank that up one more level, you can learn to code. And now you can have a little army of robots doing that, helping you out as well. So between media, books, podcasts, um, and code, we have so much permissionless leverage that all the new fortunes are created through permissionless leverage. It's the old world fortunes where you needed to either have a big hedge fund, a lot of capital that other people gave you, or the worst kind of leverage of labor where you just have lots and lots of people working for you. But um, those forms of leverage, I think, are very outmoded. And it, it kind of boggles my mind. Like, for example, I, I was touring a construction site the other day. There was like a house that was being built. And as I'm going through it, you know, the workers are working on different parts of the house. And you look at a house and it's so complicated to build a house. It is unbelievably complicated. And it's a lot of work. It's like heavy lifting. And it just kind of blew my mind that these people basically got paid less than someone who's sipping coffee and writing code a couple hours a day. Um, but at the same time, you have to realize that what they're doing is permission leverage, right? It's a lot of labor involved. Uh, it's sort of well known how to do that. So the creativity, this creative side of it is mostly gone. Uh, it's mostly just execution. And it's only a matter of time before they get replaced by machines and robots. Obviously, some trades go sooner than others. And they don't really get a product of learning. And learning is just a byproduct of curiosity. So ultimately, if you are curious about something, you will be successful at it. And the more curious you are about it, the more successful you will be at it. So if your overwhelming desire is to figure out how to make money and how that works, then you'll make money. If yeah. your overwhelming desire is to figure out how or why people are happy and how to be happy, you'll be happy. But it's got to be kind of your overwhelming thing. Um, so l learning knowledge literally is power, but the mechanism through which it achieves power is through leverage.